Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the meshless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the Word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. This broadcast is dedicated and devoted to those that love truth, for truth seekers. If you love truth, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't beat around the bushes. We let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, we're going to get right into our message on this day. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone with a minimum knowledge of the Bible know that T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Jamal Bryant, William Murphy, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, Mike Todd, Stephen Furtick, Jesse DePlantis, John Hagee, Noel Jones, Joyce Myers, Juanita Biden, Paula White, and other celebrity mega pastors are false prophets. But many Christians have put their guards down with pastors like Geno Jennings. But Geno Jennings is the most dangerous false prophet in the United States and perhaps the world. And his followers are the most brainwashed sheeples on planet Earth. Geno Jennings have cast a spell on his followers. He has bewitched them. Geno and his sheeples remind me of the account of Simon the sorcery we find in the book of, of Acts chapter number 8 verses 9 through 11. It says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorceries and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is, is the great power of Elohim. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Simon bewitched the people of Samaria, and he gave out that himself was some great one. Gino have the same effect and impact on his followers as Simon had on the people of Samaria. In verse 10, it says that the people of Samaria actually believed that Simon was the great power of Yahweh. In other words, the people thought Simon was anointed by Yahweh. Gino followers ignorantly believe he is anointed and he is a true teacher of Yahweh. But Gino followers have been bewitched. False prophets have been bewitching and beguiling people for generations. Apostle Paul told the Galatians in Galatians chapter 3 verses 1, O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. Gino Sheeples are definitely foolish, and they don't recognize the truth when they hear it. They have been so indoctrinated with false doctrine that when they hear the truth, they attack it. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 declares, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the master that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. This passage describes describes Gino Jennings to the T. He has brought in damnable heresies. What he teaches will damn your soul 
to hell. And Gino and his ignorant followers speak evil of the truth. They speak against truth that they have no knowledge of. They don't know anything outside of their Pentecostal apostolic doctrinal box. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and because they have rejected knowledge, Yahweh said, I have rejected thee. Then in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, it says, My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Gino exposes and talk about every preacher in the U.S., he has been speaking against T.D. Jakes nonstop since T.D. Jakes' scandal have come out in the public. He attacks and fight every preacher, ladies and gentlemen, any big name preacher. He attacks and he fights them. But you better not say anything about his false teachings. His sheeples will go ballistic. You should see some of the comments Gino followers wrote in my comment section on YouTube and TikTok. Their comments were so hateful and disrespectful, but Gino can tear down every preacher, but you better not say anything about his ignorance, his arrogance, his pride, and forwardness. And you better not expose his heresies. You can talk about me like a dog if you want to. With all your disrespectful and derogatory remarks. But it won't move me one bit. It will not shake me one bit. I will be a thorn in Gino and every false teacher's side. I know this hate being targeted at me comes with the territory, ladies and gentlemen, but you won't shut my mouth. Gino is in the same boat with T.D. Jakes. Both of these men are false prophets. Gino is just a lesser of evil than T.D. Jakes. Gino is a master deceiver. He is ordained to this condemnation. Romans chapter 16 Verses 17 through 18 declares, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Gino should be avoided at all costs. Verse 18 says, For they that are such serve not our master, Yahoshua Mashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Gino has mastered the art of deception and his apostolic doctrine. But if Gino had to go outside of his religious doctrinal box, he will be lost. He has mastered his few scriptures and theology. There's a scripture that comes to my mind in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 56. Let's listen what the word of Yahweh says here in Isaiah 56. This describes Geno Jennings also to a T, ladies and gentlemen. Verse number 10, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. He is a very spiritually, biblically ignorant man. If he has to go outside of his uh, theology box, his religious uh, apostolic box, ladies and gentlemen, he's lost, ladies and gentlemen. He, he won't have any feet to stand on. His washermen are blind. They are all ignorant, spiritually ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They have no knowledge of the scriptures whatsoever. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone, for his gain from his quarter. Gino is well versed in his false theology. And he preys on the simple. 
and all his followers are simple. They are extremely spiritually ignorant and unlearned and illiterate, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that the false prophets, by their good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. They prey on the naive and gullible. Geno followers are extremely naive and gullible. I have interacted with them. They don't know their head from their behind spiritually. They are very close-minded people, similar to the Hebrew Israelites, Jehovah Witness, ladies and gentlemen. Geno followers feel safe in their religious box. They won't go outside of their religious box because they know you will destroy them with, with the Bible and church history. They absolutely know nothing about church history, pagan customs, the misdeeds of the European Bible translators, and the creation and, in, and invention of the generic and artificial names and titles, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Lord, and God. They know nothing about this knowledge and don't want to learn about it either. Second Timothy chapter three, verses five through six declares having a form of holiness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins and led away with divers lusts. In biblical times, disciples of Yahoshua Mashiach assembled together in houses to worship. And the false prophets would creep into houses where silly women assembled and pray and target the silly women. Silly is defined as a foolish person having or showing a lack of common sense, discernment, and judgment. Gino has a lot of silly women following him. He has probably three times more silly women than men following him, perhaps even more. If Gino Sheeples knew the word of truth and knew how to rightly divide the word of truth, ladies and gentlemen, they would not be susceptible and vulnerable to his deception. First John uh, 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of Elohim. For many false prophets are gone out in the world. Geno Jennings' um, uh, sheeples, his followers, cannot discern that he is a false prophet prophet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they can't try him. They can't try, test his spirit because they are ignorant of the word of Yahweh. The Bible tells us, amen, that many false prophets are gone out in the world. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Well, how do we try the spirit? We try the spirit by the word of Yahweh. Geno Jennings and his followers, they have this box, this little uh, perimeter or jurisdiction that they remain in, an uh, apostolic, uh, very, very simple, very, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very elementary, very basic teachings, no, no depthness, uh, in his teaching. His teaching is very, very shallow. He's a very shallow preacher, but he's well versed in the knowledge, amen, of his theology, ladies and gentlemen. But he's very, very shallow, shallow and elementary in his teaching, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of things that he teach is for babes, for, for, for new converts. Uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Mashiach, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, a laying out of, of hands, ladies and gentlemen, or baptisms, or the resurrection of the dead and fate towards Elohim. These are basic things, and these are the things that he primarily 
teaches and and address, ladies and gentlemen. Very uh, basic thing. The Bible did not tell us to leave a man, the basic elementary apostles doctrine, because in Acts 2 and 42, it says they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, breaking of bread and fellowship and in prayer. But we should always preach about water baptism in the name. They say Jesus Christ in the name of Yahushua. They, 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 you shouldn't just, just deal with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and a woman wearing a dress and a woman shouldn't wear makeup. All those things is true, but it's deeper things, ladies and gentlemen. It's deeper things than homosexuality and fornication. It's many deeper things. That's why Paul said, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on to perfection. What Paul was saying, we should not continue to to teach the same basic elementary apostles doctrine all the time, but we need to go on to perfection. And his followers cannot try his spirit because they, they are very shallow in the word of Yahweh. They are very basic people. Now, they're good in their spirit their uh, theology and their apostolic little box that they stay in, but if they have to go outside that box, they lost, ladies and gentlemen. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15 declares, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Mashiach. And no marvel for Satan himself would transform himself into an angel of light. And it's no great thing that his ministers would transform themselves into ministers of Mashiach, whose works, whose uh, um, works is according to their works, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. It says that therefore it is no great thing that his ministers also be transformed as minister of, ministers of righteousness. Satan ministers whose ends shall be according to their works. As men, he is a minister of righteousness. He is Satan's minister. He is one of Satan's main agents today that is deceiving people. Remember the Bible says, Yahoshua said in the book of Matthew 24 and 24, he said, if it's possible, they shall be able to deceive the very land. See, he is so shrewd. He is a shrewd operator. He is a very deceitful operator because he brings some truth, basic truth, truths, ladies and gentlemen, and this is how he get me. He speaks about holiness. He speaks about the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongue. He speaks about the baptism, which he uses the wrong name. He uses Jesus Christ. He don't use Yahushua Mashiach. He deals with holiness. He preach against sin. He preach against uh, worldliness and all of these things. But this is how he's able to seduce Yahweh's people. Ladies and gentlemen, if it's possible, they'll be able to deceive the very elect. And this is what he have done, ladies and gentlemen. He is a master deceiver. He, he, he knows the art of deception. And he, ladies and gentlemen, is a master in what he believes, his theology. He's very well versed in his theology his doctrinal box. He can't go outside of it, but he's very well versed in that. Gino is a false apostle and a deceitful worker, transforming himself as a minister of righteousness. And, and I kind of feel sorry for his dumb sheep and lambs that follow him. Isaiah 9 and 16 declares, it is the leaders of this people that caused them the error, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Matthew 15 and 14, Yahushua declared, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Yahushua is speaking of the Pharisees as blind and those that follow their leadership as blind and says that ultimately they will both ladies and gentlemen, as blind people who lead blind people do, fall into the ditch. Gino is a modern day Pharisee. He has a holier than thou, self-righteous and sanctimonious spirit, very arrogant. He is 
proud. You can see pride and arrogance. And he's conceited. You can see it all over him. You can see the pride all over this man, ladies and gentlemen. But Yahweh said pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. And the Bible tells us that Yahweh resists the proud but gives his grace to the humble. The scripture also says, ladies and gentlemen, Proverbs 6 and 7, that Yahweh hates a proud look, ladies and gentlemen. And this man has a very proud Look, ladies and gentlemen, Gino is a modern-day Pharisee. He has a holier-than-thou, self-righteous, sanctimonious spirit, and he is spiritually blind like the Pharisees of Yahushua's day, and he is leading tens of thousands of blind Christians into the ditch of hell. Apostle Paul declared in Acts chapter 20 verses 29 through verse 30, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Geno is a grievous wolf that have entered in and he is not sparing the flock. He is getting lamb chops for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and also enjoying a midnight snack. Yahoshua said, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's uh, clothing, but inward they are ravening wolves, ladies and gentlemen. It's a cult. This man is a cult leader. He's no different than Jim Jones or David Koresh or any other cult leader. <clears throat> and he is definitely speaking perverse things. He says that the son, he called him the son of God, the son of Elohim, amen, that title was removed at the cross. There's no more son. That is a, that's blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. All through the Bible, Paul and, and the rest of the apostles mention the son, ladies and gentlemen. He teaches there's no more son of God. He preached this demonic, amen, oneness message. I know that Yahoshua is Elohim. He was made Elohim. He was uh, without controversy, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, without controversy, greatest the mystery of, of, of holiness. Elohim was manifesting in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preaching to the Gentile, believe on in the world, receive up in the world, and in, 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 in glory. The Bible said in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, the word was Elohim, the word became flesh, was made flesh, and dwelt among us. We know that Yahoshua is Elohim. But ladies and gentlemen, if you read the, the teachings, uh, the letters of Apostle Paul and all the other apostles, go and read their letters, how they open up their salutation in their letters. They always recognize the Father and the Son, ladies and gentlemen. They always recognize both the Father and the Son. It's a cult. And he is definitely speaking perverse things and drawing away disciples after him. Gino have his own disciples and they are called Genoites. Yes, these Genoites, they love him to death. They're going to love him all the way to hell, ladies and gentlemen. He is not making disciples unto Yahoshua Mashiach, but disciples to himself. Disciples of Geno Jennings. First Church of our Lord Geno Jennings. That's what they need to rename the church. The Church of our Lord. First Church of our Lord Geno Jennings. And I don't put all the blame on Geno. But I put a lot of the blame on Geno's sheeples, his, his disciples. 2 Timothy 4 and 3 declares, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heat to themselves, teachers having itching ears. We can see here that we can't put all the blame on Geno because it says, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Today, in these end times we're living in, people, after their own lust, they shall gather to themselves false 
prophets because their ears are itching. They want to hear something. They want someone to scratch their ears. Today, false prophets don't have to go looking for followers. People with itching ears will go looking for false teachers. <clears throat> Geno Jennings have the spirit of error on his life. He has been anointed with the spirit of error. And those who have the spirit of error on their lives gravitate and are drawn to him like matter to a magnet. 1 John 4 and 6 declares we are of Elohim. <clears throat> he that knows Elohim hears us. He that is not of Elohim hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Geno teaches that we don't have to observe the fourth commandment. The Bible tells us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Listen, the seventh day was established, ladies and gentlemen, at creation. It was instituted and incorporated at creation way before the law. Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham kept the law. Adam, at, rather the Sabbath. Adam kept the Sabbath. The patriarchs and the matriarchs, they all kept the Sabbath. Now let me tell you something. If you read in your Bible in Exodus chapter 16, you will find that the children of Israel was observing the seventh day Sabbath before Moses received the law on Mount Sinai, ladies and gentlemen. The Sabbath day is right, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh even himself set an example for us, and he rested on the seventh day. He set an example for you and I. We see that Yahoshua manifested, Elohim manifesting in the flesh. The Bible said in Luke 4 and 16, it was his custom that he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Yahushua would say the Sabbath day was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. It was John, the revelator said that he was in the spirit on Yahweh's day. Yahweh's day is not the first day of the week Sunday, but it's the seventh day of the week. And if you do your church history, you will find that Roman Emperor Constantine and his uh, uh, Roman uh, bishops, ladies and gentlemen, they changed the seventh day Sabbath, the Roman Catholic Church, and introduced a Sunday, amen, Sabbath, because they, are, they were sun worshiper observers, amen. The first day of the week, look on your calendar, the first day of the week is Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Just where this sunrise service comes from, Sunday morning service comes from, worshiping the sun on Sunday. The, the, the ancient Romans worship soul invictus. Amen. The sun God. The Romans worship the sun. And this is why all this Sunday stuff came. And if you do your church history, which Geno Genesis and his followers would never do, you will find that Roman Emperor Constantine uh, made an edict that if anyone was found worshiping on the seventh day Sabbath, it was an automatic death sentence. They were crucified. He exterminated them. Killed them, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me. You read it in church history. These was Gentiles and Hebrews that was observing the Sabbath day that he killed them. Hundreds of thousands of them for observing the seventh day Sabbath. Friend, this man is a deceiver. He is a deceitful worker. And he preys on ignorant and unlearned people. He preys on gullible and not Eve individual. He preys on silly women, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why he is so successful in his era, ladies and gentlemen. So he don't he teach that we don't have to observe the seventh day Sabbath. Now you can go and you look at my other messages. I dealt with address Geno Jennings and I meant many of my messages, ladies and gentlemen, on this channel, and you can look at my teachings. I, I taught on the seventh day Sabbath. I taught on all these things, ladies and gentlemen, but I don't have the time to go into that, ladies and gentlemen, today. So he teaches that Yahoshua is our rest. Yahoshua in the Holy Ghost is our spiritual rest. I agree. 
but not a physical rest. The seventh day Sabbath is our physical rest. Yahweh is give, giving us uh, our spirit of rest, our soul of rest, and our physical bodies a rest, ladies and gentlemen. The seventh day Sabbath is our physical rest. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Gino teaches we don't have to observe the dietary law. He said we can eat hog meat. Friend, do yourself common sense to tell you don't eat a hog. Common sense. Uh, hogs got all types of worms, tape worms, round worms, uh, trichinosis worms, ladies and gentlemen. And when you eat the hog meat, by cooking the meat, you can't kill these worms. And when you eat the hog meat, the worms get in your brain. They travel through your bloodstream, get in all your organs, your heart, your brain, your lungs, your kidneys, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, your liver, and all your major origin, organs all throughout your body. These trichinosis worms eat away at your brain, ladies. That's why a lot of people get dementia. They ain't telling y'all this. That's why a lot of people get all these diseases because they eating hog meat, swine, the abomination, which Yahweh told us not to eat, ladies and gentlemen. That stuff is abomination. And if you don't believe me, for all y'all people that Gino Jennings taught y'all that Yahweh cleaned it, you can eat anything. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You read Isaiah chapter 66 and verses 15 through 17, and that ain't even been fulfilled. That's a verse that that, that passage is going to be fulfilled in these end times, ladies and gentlemen. It speaks about when Yahushua is going to come back, ladies and gentlemen, and he's going to destroy all those that eat swine's flesh, the abomination in the mouth. That's at his second coming. So if Yahweh clean that stuff and you can eat that filth, ladies and gentlemen, well, Yahweh is double-minded because he said, why is he going to destroy those to eat it when he comes back, ladies and gentlemen? Don't line up. I'm, I'm trying to help y'all people. See, you know what's wrong with y'all people? Y'all believe this man. Y'all close-minded and you won't listen to the truth. That's what's wrong with That's why you you own your way to hell. You're going to have a rude awake, awakening because you really think, y'all people really think Gino got it and y'all got it. Y'all going to have a rude awakening when you stand before Yahweh. Yes, Gino Jennings teaches we don't have to observe the dietary law. Even we see Noah. Noah knew the clean uh, beast from the unclean beast. Even Noah, when he got off the ark, what did Noah do? He he offered Yahweh a sacrifice in the eighth chapter of Genesis. He offered Yahweh a sacrifice of all the clean fowls and the beast. He didn't offer Yahweh a sacrifice of the unclean animals and fowls, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me. Why did he do that? Why didn't he offer any beast. Why didn't he offer the unclean beast, but he offered the clean beast? This is before the law. You know what? The dietary law, uh, the seventh day Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen, all it does is reaffirm or affirm what Yahweh already did at creation, my friend. My goodness. Amen. Gino Jennings teach you we don't have to observe the dietary law. He said we can eat hog meat, catfish, shrimps, crabs, lobster, Amen. Cockroaches and rats of the of the sea and, and the rivers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, turtles, rabbits, uh, raccoons, possums, squirrels, nutria rats, musk rats, and other abominable foods. Gino teaches and condone tithing. He condones tithing, ladies and gentlemen. You know, in the, in, 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 in the old covenant, they tithe, ladies and gentlemen, from the produce of the ground, the agriculture. A amen. And from animals, laid from their livestock. They didn't tithe money, ladies and gentlemen. You can't find one scripture in the new covenant where we are commanded to tithe. But we are, amen, commanded to give a free will offering, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, uh, uh, 9 and 7, 9 and 7, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, it says, let every man give according he have purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for Yahweh loves a cheerful giver. And Geno Jennings, their women don't wear a proper head covering. Women should never reveal a strain 
of hair on their heads. Gino's women's revealed their hair. You can see their bangs, their hair coming. They don't even wear proper head coverings, ladies and gentlemen. Gino uses the generic and artificial names and titles, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Lord, and God. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done studies on this. I've done teachings. You can go and look at my channel. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know the teachings on there, I've done the teachings. I'm not going to go back over that, ladies and gentlemen. You want to know, go, amen, and look at my amen uh, channel, ladies and gentlemen. And I got teachings on this subject, amen. Where did the name Jesus come from? Where did the name Jehovah come from? Where the Lord God, where all the, they originated from? What's the roots and the origins of these artificial uh, and, and uh, uh, generic and imitation counterfeit names, ladies and gentlemen? He won't do this. He won't study. He won't even tell you the misdeeds of the European Bible translators, what they did, how they removed the true sacred names and uh, uh, put in these surrogate substitutes, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Gino uses the generic and artificial name and title, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Lord and God. Go look in your Britannica, Britannica, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Encyclopedia. Read it, read it, read it, and look under the word Jehovah, and look what it says. It says an artificial name for the God of Israel. That's what it says, artificial. But he believed Jehovah is the name. A Roman Catholic monk invented the name Jehovah. Jesus Christ, the Roman Catholic Church invented the name Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, the name Jesus Christ is not in the, the original Bibles. When it was first printed in the 15th century, the name Jesus wasn't even in it. It was Esau's. And when the, because the J was not yet invented, the name Jesus ain't even 500 years old. The, 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 the letter J is only 500 years old. It was invented in 1524, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, Jesus is a Greek Latin name. There's no J in the Hebrew alphabet or the Greek alphabet. His name was not Jesus at birth. And if you've been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, you need to be rebaptized in the name of Yahushua Mashiach because your baptism, ladies and gentlemen, is invalid. It's invalid. You've been baptized in a name that was made up like Zeus. How you spell Zeus? Z-E-U-S. How you spell Horus? H-O-R-U-S. How do you spell Julius? Amen. Gaius Julius. Huh? U.S., the, the letters U.S. after all these things. Uh, most of the Greek gods and the ancient Roman gods, they, they names ended with the letter U.S. Jesus, J-E-S, U-S, ladies and gentlemen. The Romans and the Greeks, look at their name. You know history. If you know a little bit about ancient uh, Roman and Greek history, you know most of their names was uh, ended in the letters U-S. Look, Augustus, huh? the first emperor of Rome, Augustus, the, the most notorious uh, uh, man in ancient Rome, Juli Gaius Julius Caesar, U-S. The letters U.S. at the end of their names, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Claudius, another emperor. Uh, Titus, another emperor. Uh, Tiberius, another emperor. It goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. It, they invented the name Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to close here. If you want to hear me teaching on these subjects, listen to my other messages about Geno Jennings and my other messages that we have on this channel. Well, we're going to close here. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. If y'all think y'all going to shut my mouth, y'all are mistaken. I'm going to be a thorn in Geno Jennings' side. He's a thorn in everybody else's side. He want to be able to talk about and address all these other false teachers and false prophets, but nobody don't want to touch him. If he don't want nobody to mess with him, he need to keep his mouth off of all these other false prophets, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to speak about how this man is deceiving the world, ladies and gentlemen. We thank Yahweh for you. If you will, we want you to like, share, and subscribe. We will really appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Shalom.